Welcome back to Teletroan. Let's continue. At this moment, we will talk about the different classification of invertebrates. You have previously learned about invertebrates. In this lesson, we will talk about invertebrates. Invertebrates do not have a backbone. However, the absence of a backbone does not hinder or affect their survival. In fact, invertebrates makes up roughly 97% of animals on Earth, while vertebrates makes up only 3%. Invertebrates live in all kinds of environments and in almost every place on Earth. They live on land, water, or both. They may be free-living or parasitic. Some are so small, they cannot be seen with the naked eye, while some are larger than most animals. They come in all forms, sizes, shapes, colors, and roles in the ecosystem. The first one are the sponges. Sponges are also called coriferans. They have pores of openings all over their bodies. They are mostly marine animals. Few can be found in fresh water. Sponges are the simplest form of animals. They spend their lives attached to rocks or underwater surfaces. Some sponges also have spicules, which are made of hard minerals that provide sponges with rigidity and protection. Sponges which do not have spicules are supported by a network of top fibers. Sponges are not hunters, rather they are filter feeders, structure called Color cells obtain nutrients by filtering the water that passes through the sponge's pores. Water then leaves the sponges through a large opening called osculum. Next in line are the nidarians, or formerly known as colanterids. There are over 10,000 kinds of these marine animals. They are mostly found in the oceans, no matter what depth or location, but a few are found in fresh water. Nidarians are diverse, but can be classified into three groups, hydras, jellyfishes, corals, and sea anemones. Corals live in colonies. They have a skeleton made of limestone, which eventually becomes structure called coral reefs. Nidarians have stinging structure called nematocysts. These are barbed threads tipped with poison which are ejected like a dart to paralyze a prey or defend the nidarians against other animals. This is why jellyfish stings are very painful and there can be even be fatal. In addition to nematocysts, nidarians also have six ten tentacles surrounding the mouth that help in the capturing food. Since they lack of anus, waste are discharged through the same opening. Next are flatworms. Flatworms are called such because of their flat and ribbon-like bodies. They do not have body cavities that contain developed circulatory or respiratory organs. They feed by sucking out juices from the body of their prey. Their digestive cavity has only one opening for taking in food and excreting waste. Some flatworms, such as tapeworms and flukes, are parasitic. A tapeworm's body is a series of segments. Each segment has both male and female sex organs. This arrangement makes reproduction fast and convenient. They get nourishment from their hosts. There are also non-parasitic flatworms such as planarians. These flatworms are found in lakes and ponds. They feed on smaller organisms both living and dead. Interestingly, planarians are able to regenerate lost part of their bodies. When a planarian is cut into two, both parts are able to grow into new planarian. Roundworms are also called nematodes. They have long, smooth, and rounded bodies which often have rings, bristle, or ridges that aid in the locomotion or protection. They are found in the water, in the soil, or in other plants and animals as parasites. Roundworms take in food through the mouth and excrete waste material through the anus. 
The passage of food through the digestive system is propagated by the worm's wave-like movements. Some roundworms such as hookworms, pinworms, ascaris, hilarial worms, and trichina worms are parasitic. Ascaris, hookworms, and pinworms can enter through stomach and intestines and cause damage. Trichina worms infest the tongue and diaphragm and cause them serious injury. Filarial worms can infest the body and make the legs and feet swell. This condition is known as elephantiasis. Segmented worms are also called annelids. They have long segmented bodies and their bodies allow them to burrow in the soil or swim in the water easily. Annelids can be found in the land, in fresh water, or even in salt water. The first segment in an annelid's body contains the brain and the sense organs, while the rearmost segment contains the anus. While annelids have digestive, circulatory, and nervous system, they do not have a respiratory system. They have to breathe through their skin. That is why their skin needs to be moist at all the time. Many annelids live under rocks or burrow into the soil to get food and prevent their bodies from drying up. One example is the earthworm, which loosens the soil as it burrows, making it very useful in maintaining the aeration and hydration of the soil. Some annelids like leeches live on other animals or plants. They attach to vertebrates and feed on the host blood through their suckers. Mollusks occupy a vast range of aquatic and terrestrial habitats. They include the shellfish you eat and the snails you see in your garden. Most mollusks have shells that protect their soft bodies. Univalves such as snails only have one shell. Bivalves such as clams, oysters, scallops, and mussels have two shells. Some mollusks like octopus and squid have a shell-like structure called a pen inside their bodies. Some, like the garden sea slugs, do not have shells at all. There are mollusks that have a tongue-like structure with many rows of teeth which are used to scrap food attached to the rocks as well as to filter food from the water. There are also some that possess tentacles to help catch live prey and aid their movement in water. Echinoderms are spiny skinned aquatic animals. They include starfish, sand dollar, and sea urchin. All echinoderms live in marine environments, most of them preferring to stay at the bottom of the sea. Echinoderms do not have a head end or tail end. Underneath their bodies are tube feet which they use for movement. The bodies of echinoderms have an internal network of fluid called canals that are connected through a large body cavity. This makes feeding, moving, and sensing their surroundings easier. They also have a simple digestive system that differs depending on what they eat. Some echinoderms can make their digestive system slip out of their bodies so they digest the food outside other bodies. Arthropods are the largest group of any animals, whether in the number of types or number of animals. They are found in freshwater, marine, and terrestrial habitats. Some of them are even able to fly. No matter how huge this group is, all arthropods share common characteristics that distinguish them from other groups of animals. They have a hard outer body covering called exoskeleton, jointed legs, segmented body, compound eyes, and specialized body parts. Crustaceans are a group of arthropods with two pairs of antenna. Their bodies are divided into three regions, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. In some crustaceans, the head and thorax fuse together. They have gills for breathing. Their exoskeleton are very hard. Well-known crustaceans are shrimps, crabs, and lobsters. 
Spiders are also arthropods and are usually called arachnids. They live on land. They have two body regions, cephalothorax and the abdomen. They have four pair of legs. They breathe through their trachea or book lungs. Other arachnids include mites, ticks, and scorpions. Centipedes and millipedes are segmented arthropods. Each segment of a centipede has a pair of legs while a millipede has two pairs. Centipedes are carnivorous and have poisonous fangs in their mouth, which is why their sting is painful. Meanwhile, millipedes are detritivores, meaning they feed in dead plants and animals matter. Both centipedes and millipedes live hidden in the soil, underneath rocks or logs. The largest group of arthropods are the insects. An insect's body is composed of three regions too, the head, thorax, and the abdomen. They have compound eyes, six jointed legs, and have one to two pairs of wings. Insects breathe through a network of tubes called trachea, which open to the thorax and abdomen. They also have antenna for chemical perception. Remember that invertebrates do not have a backbone. Invertebrates live in all kinds of environment and in almost every place on earth. They live on land, water, or both. They may be free-living or parasitic. They are the sponges, nidarians, flatworms, roundworms, segmented worms, mollusks, echinoderms, and arthropods. Again, at this point, let's see if you learn something by classifying the following invertebrates. Let's classify the following invertebrates as sponges, nidarians, flatworms, round worms, segmented worms, mollusks, echinoderms, or arthropods. Let's have the first one. The first one is a jellyfish. A jellyfish is a lidarian. Correct. Next, we have hookworm. Hookworm belongs to correct, round worms. Next is Planaria. Planaria is a, you got it right, flat worms. Next we have clumps. Clumps is an example of, correct, mollus. Lastly, we have spider. A spider is an example of arthropods. Thank you for your active participation. I hope you learned a lot with the series of lessons I presented. This has been Joe Marik Mapindan of Mayapyap Elementary School. See you again next time.